afternoon classmates uh, before i proceed with my topic let me just uh, uh congratulate you all uh, for making it this far in the eighth executive class uh, postgraduate diploma in security resiliency management course class 0819 anaconda i chose this topic uh, not just for the purposes of uh, discussion and compliance of course but rather uh, this topic inspires me to become an advocate of uh, drills and exercises uh, for a reason that I believe that no matter how stringent your security policies are, emergency response, crisis management plans for that matter, uh, it will never be tested until such time you put it into action. No way you can never check the integrity of your systems if you cannot just put it into action. So rapid active killer incident, a state of resiliency in business and organizations. Not known to many of us, uh, rap rapid active uh, shooters and killings uh, have gone far way back through history. So let me just uh, take you back a little bit further. One day on September, 1949, what was supposed to be a very peaceful day, uh, turned out bloody when a man started shooting down, killing people along Camden 32nd Street. So he used a weapon and that incident had 13 kills. Investigators then, way back, just simply called it as an act of killing through the use of weapon. So, at that time, active shooters and active killers, the word per se, just simply doesn't or didn't exist. And I had my own share of that story when I was at a resort heading a security team in a very prominent resort in the Philippines, particularly in Lapu-Lapu. So we didn't know then, even in our crisis management plans, never was a word stating exactly dealing with incidents uh, pertaining to active shooters. Uh, so we had this guest, he was armed and started firing shots on the ground, emptying out almost around two clips of his uh, 45 pistol. And then incidentally, he was able to go back to the room. So. We were very surprised and taken aback on that incident. We were not able to immediately determine uh, what we need to do. But to cut the story short, we were able to neutralize the incident. We were able to extricate the guy effectively from the floor and from his room without any injuries or any disturbances among the guests. And right after the incident, uh, the crisis management team led by the GM, we convened, taking a look back at all of all what is written in my uh, emergency manual. So at, at the time, we just simply called it armed person in premise because we just didn't know it was actually a near active shooter incident situation. So, armed person in premise. Now, this comes a very sensational shootings again, such as the 23 kills on October 16, 1991, Texas shooting. 32 kills, 2017, Virginia Tech shooting. And then December 14 of 2012, Sunday. Sandy Hook shooting, killing 27 people. 49 kills, June of 2016. We had the Orlando shooting. 58 kills, Nevada shooting, and then 25 kills. The same year, Sutherland spring shooting. And we had our own as well. This actually gained prominence within the hotel industry. Of course, uh, Everybody remembers what went on during this incident. 
then this gained actually prominence to the word itself, active shooter. But security managers were actually more interested then on what the impact of that incident towards the business while the law enforcement people were very busy on putting up counter procedures. After that incident, uh, our counterparts there in Manila, uh, they actually started putting in some specific countermeasures to deal with active shooting incidents and active killers. This is actually the impact, the thing that security managers are more concerned about. After the incident, the property lost around this much net attack. Resorts World Manila operator loses 4.7 billion market cap after deadly incident. So, the focus was actually on the dealing with the impacts on the active shooter incidents. Uh, to recall, although there were no incidents of death through the use of that weapon, the deaths itself and the number of people who died actually because of the suffocation. So, Again, we came back again with some analysis. We convened and together found a lot of uh, issues to tackle. So I will not explore so much on this due to some uh, very time constraint given. But more or less, in general, if we look at the bigger picture, we actually found some issues pertaining to this subject. Importantly, what I have noticed really on the last part, the importance of this actually boils down to the failure of or probably mishandling of that incident. So it actually made me realize that we spent so much time doing the manuals, making it look good for our GMs, and yet we really don't have the leisure time and the convenience to test the integrity of our manuals because we're not simply because we we're not putting it into action now in general terms we also agree and convene that we have this for a reason why security often fail in the context of hospitality and tourism the art of balancing security with the hotel image culture is one good challenge for us while we're doing and maintaining that level of uh, service towards our guests. And yet, we see to it that we don't compromise the security operations of the property. So, it's something that's very hard to balance. Second, absence of security standards. I spoke with people from even DOT, TESDA, even the accreditations uh, handbook of DOT. You can barely see specific standards for hotels. Yes, we can see around maybe four, three, four mentions of uh, security, but in general terms, they need only a security guard, a security, a 24-hour security coverage within some points of the hotel. But barely, we don't have specific standards for, for example, locking systems for a three, four-star hotel and so on. Poor or lack of moral administrative support and financial support from the executive level and business owners. This came again as a fact because they see the security department as a spending unit. Um, it's actually normal, unfortunately, that they don't see the long-term benefit of our existence in any organization. It will not happen here attitude. A very common reason why security fails. It happened in 1949. It happened in 2017, Resorts World. Now, very good example is suicide bombers around 10 to 15 years ago. It's more like of a myth. It's close to a myth, but it happened in Hulu Cathedral which is a very big realization for us that these people are here already.
Now, continuing coordination and mutual understanding among law enforcement agencies and the business sector in terms of uh, exchanging information on critical process of our organization for them to understand how we work internally in terms of security. So the incident shows were clearly also uh, expresses this thought at the point when law enforcement agencies arrived and they had basically nothing in hand. Now, of course, when we prepared this simulation exercise, there would always be challenges. Challenges that we always face, obstacles while preparing uh, large-scale deals, be it fire deal. Now, what I have here is a preparation on how, a presentation on how we did things. We had one uh, major exercise concerning Cymex for active active killer incident. And this was actually the first exercise recognized by by the region. It's a government initiated exercise uh, involving almost all agencies in Cebu City, including fire and medical emergency services, SWAT, and so on. Now, I just uh, wish to share this to you so to help us better prepare in doing major deals like rapid active shooting incidents. Initially, we had the first meeting on the activity involving all law enforcement agencies in Cebu, to include police, fire, and all those uh, in medical services in the city. Disaster units uh, involved, included. Initially, we laid out our corporate security protocols, uh, the systems that we had to orient the, in the parties of what we really have in the property. Second, um, of course, we have to brief our own team members about the activities, specific roles, and the responses that they are expected to do in the exercise. We also had, we also involved our uh, risk management teams, support teams of the hotel composed by uh, the different departments and team members, refresh them and uh, reorient them with what we have in terms of emergency response. We also had a uh, refresher course on first aid response, uh, especially treating wounded, extrication, and uh, casualty care, led by our nurse. And then, with all those, we came up with the documentation, and we actually Two months and four days of preparation. 
that was the cost of uh, business resiliency and resiliency that we have our own for the business in terms of dealing with rapid active shooter or rapid active killer incident. So two months and four days and less than 60 minutes to go down during the actual activity. So the point I'm trying to get across is we have dealt with our challenges in preparing all the emergency plans. In the same way, we have dealt all the challenges in putting that into action, which is for me the only way to test the integrity of your emergency systems. So I dealt with mine then. Now I think it's about time to deal with yours. So before I end, I would like to leave you this question. How safe are you? Thank you.